God will be honored in our celebrations. And may he make our nation great again in Jesus' name. Um, I strongly believe that Nigeria will be great again. So for each and every one of us, let's just try to continue to pray for our leaders. I know most of the time, because of what is happening in the country, a lot of people abuse our leaders and even curse them. I believe that we should all continue to pray for our leaders so that they can lead this nation aright in Jesus' name. So our topic for this morning is handling opposition. When we talk about opposition, we are simply referring to a strong disagreement which is expressed in action or in arguments. So maybe when two or more people have a disagreement, which they now express probably in the form of an argument, that is what opposition means. And our text will be taken from our Old Testament reading, Nehemiah chapter 6 from verses 1 to 16. I won't read that passage again because it's a long one and because of time. But when we read that passage, um, we will see that Sambalat and Tobiah and their court stood against Nehemiah as he was trying to do the work of the Lord. They tried severally to distract him from the work that the Lord placed upon his hand. They rebelled against him severally, but he was able to withstand all their plans. This story of um, Nehemiah actually simply tells us that whenever we try to achieve anything significant for the Lord, we will face strong opposition. So Satan never bothers himself with people who have a low spiritual commitment. If you are not born in for the Lord, if you are not on fire for the Lord, you probably might not face opposition because Satan does not have time for you because you are not even doing anything for the Lord. However, if you are, if you have, if you are born in for the Lord and Satan sees that you are working for him, that is when he attacks most of the time. So this applies to us, both in our personal lives, in our day-to-day -day lives, as well as in our spiritual lives. So when we stand up for Christ and attempt to bring people onto God, we are trying to make the pingo to advance the kingdom of God. Opposition will arise. But if we look at the book of Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 9, which says, nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. So we will see that what the people of God did here is that when the enemy was opposing them, they responded with prayer. They responded with vigilance and they responded with focus on the Lord. So the book of Nehemiah, actually, you know, when we read that passage from chapters 3 to 6, we will see how the children of God advanced and how they faced several setbacks in the work of God. This cycle just tells us that the Christian life is a conflict. There will always be opposition. The devil will try to get us try, sidetracked or even give up completely. So when this opposition comes, what the devil is trying to do is for us to give up as Christians and probably a um, backslide in our Christian race. As a child of God, it is expected. Like I said, if you are not burning for the Lord, Satan does not have your time. But when you have that fire in you, that is when this opposition is expected. When we look at that story of Nehemiah, we will see that even though it was God's will for the world to be re rebuilt, he did not remove the opposition. He still allowed the children of God to face all that they faced. And it's the same for our Christian life. Even though God, it's God's will for us to go, to go strong in the faith and to labor to advance his kingdom, it does not remove that opposition. But if we are able to respond properly to the opposition, these challenges will drive us to greater dependence on the Lord. It will drive us to greater determination to do what is right. But if we yield to the opposition, we will quit the race in discouragement or settle for a mediocre Christian life. So as children of God, we should not live a mediocre Christian life. Whenever we are faced with challenges, we should tackle it head on so that we can continue to run the race that the Lord has given unto us. So as Christians, we need to be aware of certain, um, of certain kinds of opposition that the devil uses. 
So we'll just quickly examine a few of them, of some of the opposition that the devil uses. The first is anger. The anger of others against you. When we look on, at the book of Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 1 and also verse 7. So in verse 1 it says, But it came to pass that when Sambalat had that we builded the wall, it was wrought and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. Also in verse 7 it said, But it came to pass that when Sambalat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites had that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to, to be stopped, then they were very wrought. You will see that both in the first verse and the seventh verse, it tells us that they were wrought, like they were angry. When they add that the, the walls was being rebuilt, what exactly was making them angry, I don't really understand. But we see that the same thing happens to us today. People just get angry for nothing. When we are working for God, you are, very ang- you are very active in church. People just get angry. Like if you used to be a sinner, you used to probably club every Friday. You go to the club with your friends. And then you get born again. All of a sudden, you stop clubbing and then you start going for night vigil. It is expected that those friends that are still clubbing, they will be angry with you. Because you have left them. You have left the world. Even in our secular lives, you will see, maybe in your place of work, you are doing well. All your bosses like you. You will just see that some people are just angry. You won't really know what is making them angry. So that is one form of opposition. Another form of opposition we can experience is in terms of mockery and sarcasm. So when we look at the same book of Nehemiah chapter 4, from in verse 2, he said, And he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? You will see see that it was as if they were mocking them. What do these feeble Jews think they are doing? Are they going to fortify themselves? Are they going to sacrifice? All they are trying to say is that How do they think they can complete the project? It's the same thing in our day-to-day lives. You will see that some people are doing a project, uh, maybe for example, for like a... In fact, there there is an example that comes to my mind. It was a publication team in a school. So they used to have a chairman who had been the chairman in terms of the publication every year. Then one year they said, okay, let's get another person to be in charge of this publication. The old chairman was still there. He did not like it. Then he stood back. He didn't support the new chairman. And he was, you know, he was saying to other people that I want to see how they will achieve it. I want to see how this person will be able to do it. So when we set out to achieve certain things, some people just stand in the corner and look at us that what are they doing? That is a form of opposition. The third one is around threats and intimidation. So a lot of time, if, uh, if anger does not work and if mockery does not work, the enemy can get really aggressive. In verse 8 of Nehemiah chapter 4 and also in verse 11, we will see that the enemy was attempting to use violence. In today's contemporary world, you will see people being threatened for speaking up. Some people see what is bad in their place of work. They see people siphoning money. They see corruption like this face to face, especially people working in the finance department. But they cannot speak up for fear of being fired. That is a type of opposition. And as children of God, we should always stand for what is right. During the Bible study, we heard about compromise. Are we compromised? Do we stand up for what is right because we are faced with opposition? Number four is discouragement. In verse 10 of Nehemiah 4, we can see discouragement setting in because a lot of things had been happening, then the children of God were already discouraged. For some of God, for some of us, initially when we first of all born again, we were burning for the Lord, very exciting. But along the line, when challenges come, we get tired. Some people at that point... They are not as active as they were before. Some people stop praying. 
Some people just stop, start running from pillar to post because they are discouraged and they are wondering, is God really there? All these are things that we will face in our Christian race. And then lastly, I want to talk about fear. When we look at all the things we have talked about, the cumulative effect of everything is fear. So when we, we see this in verse 14 of Nehemiah chapter, chapter 4, it's actually good for us to read that all, um, all these chapters in Nehemiah from chapters 3 to 6, where we see the different kinds of opposition that the children of God faced. In, chap in verse 14, it says, And I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, Be not ye afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren, your sons and your daughters, your wives and your houses. So we see that fear was already setting in. So most of the time, Satan uses fear to paralyze God's people and to keep them from achieving anything significant for the Lord. At times, it could be fear of failure. It could be fear of rejection. Because some people don't want to fail, because they don't want to be rejected, and because they don't want people to laugh at them, because they don't want people to intimidate them, they do not work for the Lord. Instead, they will take the back seat, which is why a lot of us, a lot of people live an average life, a mediocre life. As children of God, we should not strive to live a mediocre life, both spiritually and in our secular lives. We should strive to live the highest form of life that the Lord has destined us to live. So having looked at all this opposition, let's quickly look at how to handle and respond to opposition. Because as children of God, when we are faced with challenges in life, we have several options. Some people choose to run away from it. Some people choose to dodge it. Some people try to work out a compromise, just like we said during the Bible study. And some people meet it head on and walk through it. This last approach of meeting it head on and walking through it is the biblical way for us to handle this in most cases. Nehemiah's approach can be broken down into four aspects. The first is prayer. The people of God prayed. They cried unto the Lord. In a, in a New Testament reading, that's 1 Peter chapter 4 and in verse 7. We can see that there. First Peter 4, 7. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. So when we are faced with opposition like this, the first thing we should do is that we should go to God in prayer. In the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, the Bible also tells us that we should pray without ceasing. It is a requirement for us as Christians to pray at all times, every day, especially when we are faced with opposition. We need to shout to the Lord for strength. We need to shout to the Lord for mercy. In addition to prayers, we also need to praise him. We need to thank him because prayer is the key. Prayer is actually the master key. When we pray and we praise God, the Lord will respond as he pleases. We should continue to work for God. So despite the fact that we are faced with challenges, we should not allow the challenges to affect our work for God. Instead, at times like this, we should remain steadfast. We should cast all our burdens on him and we should continue to work for him as he has commanded us. This is not the time for us to run away from church or to be running from pillar to post. Because challenges come in various shapes and sizes. Opposition comes in various shapes and sizes. The one you are facing might be different from the one I'm facing. But at times like this, we should continue to work for God. We should be vigilant. As children of God, we should not be ignorant of the devices of the devil. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, it tells us that we should be vigilant. As the devil is walking about like a roaring lion, looking for whom to devour. That is the work of the devil, walking about like a roaring lion. I pray that the devil will not be able to devour any one of us in Jesus' name. As Christians, we should also put on the whole armor of God so we can stand against the wiles of the devil. 
Let's, um, we can read the book of Ephesians chapter 6. We can read the whole passage. But in verses 11 to 13, it tells us about how we can stand up with the whole armor of God. So we should spend our time saturating ourselves with the word of God. A lot of people spend hours on WhatsApp, Twitter, or um, X, Instagram, a lot of us. But we, don't, but we hardly spend time with God. I was looking at the bulletin this morning. I saw um, the Bible study on Tuesday. I think just um, eight people were there. Five from one society, one, one, one from the other societies. This is not good enough. We spend so much time on Instagram. Like I tell people, there's no dull moment on Instagram. Once you're on Instagram, you can spend four hours on it. You will just be laughing and laughing and reading stories and you are happy. This is, this is not good enough. We should spend more time. It is when we are spending time with God that we should be happier. And lastly, we should keep our minds focused on the Lord. When there is opposition, it's very easy to get our focus off the Lord and focus on the problem. It's very easy for us to sit down and then we are thinking and thinking about the problem. But we should keep our minds focused on the Lord. Because the book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 2 tells us that we should set our affections on things above. Let us remain focused on the Lord. Let us cast all our cares upon him because he cares for us. So I will leave us with this song. I will cast all my cares upon him I will lay all of my bodies down at your feet at any time I don't know what to do I will cast all my cares upon him so at any time we don't know what to do at any time we are faced with an opposition let us cast all our cares upon the lord because 